Hi, and welcome back to the series where we answer the question, why do I want them dead? We're going to go through each dungeon in Classic WoW and discover the rich lore behind these places. Without further ado, let's just jump into it and start where we left off. Old Man is one of those dungeons where you can really just talk about the lore all day. It deals with old gods and titans, aka literal gods of the universe, and thousands and thousands of years of history. The reason for Old Man's creation was to protect the Discs of Norganon. These Discs were crafted by Norganon himself and given to Keepers, basically demigods that are tasked with protecting Azeroth while the Pantheon is gone. The purpose of these Discs was to record all of history while the Pantheon was gone, so when they returned back to Azeroth they could see what the Titan Keepers were doing after all this time. The Discs were placed in Old Man and guarded by Ironia and Arcadus, and the reason why they're there is there is some infighting between some of the keepers, so this is just where it would be safe. Oh man, I am so glad we are safe together and protecting this thing. Yes, I agree with that statement. Um, hello? Hey dude, um, I need to tell you something real quick. Yog saron My arch nemesis? What? What, what are you eating? Look, I'm just calling to say, I'm going to start this thing called the Curse of Flesh, where um, I'm going to turn all the creations into uh, fleshy monsters so I can corrupt them. Look, I'm just going to send you a picture of what the trogs are going to look like, okay? Alright, see you soon. Out of fear of falling under the Curse of Flesh, Arcadus, Ironia, and all these stone constructs and Old Man went into hibernation for a very, very long time. <laughs> thousands and thousands of years pass, and dwarven excavators get a bit curious and want to delve into Old Man to unveil its secrets and finally discover the origins of their race. Also, Dark Iron Dwarfs are there because they want the discs they give to Ragnaros because he just really enjoys fine literature. This is where the player character comes in. Basically, the reason why we're raiding Old Man and wanting these constructs dead is for knowledge and loot. So these Titan Watchers, literally the manifestation of the gods of the universe, tasked with protecting not only Azeroth, but it's history as we know it, are killed by a bunch of level 43 dumbasses. Nice. Long ago, Zulfarak was a part of the Gurubashi Empire and located in a beautiful, lush jungle. Azeroth used to be one big landmass, kind of like Pangaea, but after the Sundering, basically a big explosion from the Well of Eternity, that is just far too complicated to explain right now, uh, you just have to know Azeroth was split into the continents we are familiar with. After the Sundering, the lands of Teneris turned into a wasteland. This once proud tribe has turned into a desperate one from their sudden change in environment, now doing anything in their power to survive. This includes robbery, murder, cannibalism, necromancy, basically anything, and Zulfarak also has an ancient secret involving a hydra called Gazrilla. This beast is shrouded in mystery and we still don't really know its true origins, but it's safe to assume Gaz has been residing in Zulfarak before the Sundering ever happened since the Mallet the Summoner is all the way over in the Hinterlands. The Sand Trolls have also captured a group of mercenaries that we need to go rescue and retrieve a stolen goblin device from. To incentivize us saving them, they offered to pay us to be freed. Then we fight off waves and waves of trolls, and then the leader of the group says, and I quote, Thanks a lot, buddy. We couldn't have made it without you. Oh, and if I mentioned before something about repaying you for saving us? Well, you can forget it! And then the player character says, That's it. I'm tired of helping you out. It's time we settled things on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> And then we beat the snot out of the people we just saved. So in short, we go to Zulfrak to kill cannibalistic zombie trolls, 
murder poor adventurers that are just like us and kill a demigod hydra for a carrot. You know, normal stuff. The lands of Desolus used to be a beautiful foresty zone that the Tarans named Mashanshi. In these lands, Tarn shamans could sense the power of the elements and they tried to commune with these whispers through rituals and offerings. Turns out those elemental whispers was Princess Theradras, who was sleeping under the earth for thousands of years. She emerged and basically sucked up all of the life around her to regain her strength, making Desolus the wasteland it is today. Treehugger, demigod, and lord of the forest Cenarius sensed the sudden removal of life and sent his son Zaytar to investigate. Upon arrival, Zaytar knew that he had to stop Princess Theradras' corruption of the lands, but... Those smiles... Those curves... That stony caboose! Ooh, Zaytar fell madly in love with the princess. In their blind love for each other, they did the sex or something, leading to the creation of the centaur race. From birth, centaurs have always been seen as abominations when compared to their much more beautiful dryad cousins. In fact, they thought they were so ugly and vile, they killed Zaytar for bringing them into this world in the first place. Excuse me, sir. I hope my horrible ugliness won't be a distraction to you. Not at all, boy! After slaying their father, they begged for forgiveness from Princess Theradras and promised to worship her to the end of days. Theradras agreed and imbued the centaur with a compelling power to take over the surrounding lands of Kalimdor. She also kept Zaytar's spirit prisoner in a now very lopsided relationship. We are tasked with entering Theradras' lair of Marudan and rescuing Zaytar and slaying the princess to stop the centaur's rampage across Kalimdor once and for all. Remember how I talked about the Sundering earlier in the video? Well yeah, this tale starts at that point once again. The Sundering greatly affected all the troll empires, making starvation and destruction of their kingdoms an imminent threat. Many of these split sections of troll empires turn to the spirits called the Loa, who are gods that the trolls worship for power. The Gurubashi trolls of Stranglethorn were turned onto the Loa called Hakar by a group of priestly worshippers called the Atalai. All the Gurubashi had to do was give blood sacrifices to a mysterious god in order to maintain the strength of their empire. Which is easy enough and totally couldn't backfire, right? Uh, wrong. What the Atalai failed to mention is that after enough blood was sacrificed to Akar, he'd enter the physical world so he could devour the blood of all mortal creatures. The Gurbashi realized they messed up big time, and with the help of the Zandalari trolls, they stormed into the capital of Zulgrub and defeated Akar, and the Atalai priests fled into the Swamp of Sorrows. In the swamp, the priests started to construct the Temple of Atal Hakar, so they could continue their worship and bring Hakar back into the world once again. Yesera, a powerful dragon aspect, saw this temple being built and went, Oh hell no! After blowing up the lands around the temple and sinking it under the water, she sent some green dragons there to make sure nothing came in or out of this cultist temple. These dragons suck and were easily corrupted to fuel the blood rituals to summon Hakar. The leader of the temple was a priest named Jamalon. Now Jamalon of Ding Dong had a prophecy that if they ushered in Hakar once again, the Atalai priest would have immortality. Rise up Atalai! Rise up! Hakar shall live again! So we go into the second temple, slay corrupted dragons and fanatical trolls, and capture the essence of a car to give to a troll named Akinya, so this all-consuming Loa could never be summoned again. Well, just kidding, that wasn't Yakinya, that was M. Night Shyamalan, you son of a bitch! He betrays us and flees to Zulgrub to once again summon a car. The Gurubashi trolls of Stranglethorn realize that serving under her car is their only hope for survival, so now history is repeating itself as we are tasked with storming into ZG and stopping the Soul Flare once again. 
There's more to explain during the Battle of ZG, but I'll stop it here so we don't go on some super long tangent. Just know that we go into Sunken Temple to stop the summoning of a car, but instead we are the main catalyst in bringing him back to Azeroth. And that's all the dungeons we have time for today. Join me next time where we talk about some of the endgame dungeons that are just filled with unique stories. Also, I have a new Discord server that you can join, and the link will be in the description. Thanks for watching. Hi, again, thanks for watching. Um, this series is a lot of fun to make. You guys had some constructive criticism from last episode, so uh, I did some tweaking, so hopefully you guys like it even more. You guys really seem to be enjoying this, so uh, yeah, there will be more in the future. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.